was discovered by its activities in protecting the body against uh, viruses and bacteria. It was discovered as a defense system. And so the, um, the thinking has been about the immune system. Uh, how does it defend the body? How does it identify the invaders? And how does it destroy them without harming the body? But um, if we look at, uh, at the facts, uh, the, the body is a complex system and it, um, it constantly needs, uh, it needs tending and care. I mean, uh, we, we suffer trauma all the time. Our joints, we get bangs, we break bones, we get cuts. So um, we need a system to um, maintain the body, not just to defend it. Defense is, uh, in a way, uh, uh, it's not a daily event. We're not infected or we're not challenged by a, an infection every single day, but we're challenged every single day with keeping the body together. And the, the inflammatory process, which is the process of maintenance and healing, and also defense, and also defense, it's the same, the same complicated process. It has to be uh, orchestrated all the time in ways that uh, keep the body together. So you need new blood vessels. You know, if, God forbid you get a heart attack, you, or you, you, there's a healing process, or um, there are areas that um, there's a development of abnormal cells that have to be killed. So the, the, we, we need a system, and that is the immune system, to, um, to deploy the inflammatory response so that it does the right thing at the right time in the right place. It's a system that has to have some idea or some uh, uh, program or uh, algorithm for dealing with uh, these complexities. It has to be able to gather information. It has to be able to uh, process the information, it, uh, produce an output that's suitable to the input. So if the input is, is some, could be an infection, it could be um, aged cells that, have, that should be removed, it could be cancerous cells, it could be a broken bone, it could be a virus infection. The, the, uh, these various um, perturbations on the body create an input into the system. The immune system has to sense these changes and translate them into an output that's suitable to the input. Uh, in a way, it's like computation. You, it's like a Turing machine. You get a string of information that comes in, and that's converted to another string of information that goes out. Except in the case of the immune system, the output feeds back and changes the input, and it also changes the rules by which the system transforms input to output. In other words, the system is evolving along with its function. So that, that's what makes it cognitive. It, has, it, it knows what it's looking for. It's learning from experience. It's building itself with the experience of living. Uh, so it takes uh, a lot of experimentation. It takes a lot of clinical uh, experience. And it takes a lot of philosophical thinking to um, try and understand what's going on and how we can help the system when it makes a mistake. stumbled onto HSP60 as, as an important molecule in autoimmune disease um, by accident. We were looking for something else and we found uh, antibodies and T cells that reacted to HSP60. And then we uh, played with HSP60 and found, found that we could turn off autoimmune disease models with 
HSP60 or fragments of it or even DNA that encodes HSP60. And now I, I, I believe, if we look for metaphors, that the HSP60 is, is used by the immune system as, as a natural biomarker. The HSP60 is a member of a class of uh, proteins which are called stress proteins or heat shock proteins. Uh, it's probably the wrong name. Essentially, stress proteins are chaperones. Uh, they help uh, proteins assume a confirmation that they should assume or they help, uh, in the case of stress, where molecules get denatured. There's a need for um, increased expression of chaperones so the, the cell doesn't or the body doesn't poison itself with denatured molecules. So the uh, stress proteins, heat shock proteins, are not many, but they have very uh, important functions in the body under certain conditions. Now this has led the immune system to use them to learn things about the body because uh, there, there are so many different molecules, so many different processes uh, that there's no way the immune system can survey the body as a whole. It had, there's a series of informative uh, circumstances or molecules that that are important for the system to measure. It can't measure everything, but if it knows what's going on with stress proteins, it knows where the stress is, it knows what's the, the degree of the stress, and at looking at the dynamics of the expression of stress proteins, it, it, uh, the system can determine the dynamics of the, of the damaging process and the, and the healing. So stumbling into heat shock proteins and stumbling into how they might be used has, has led me to construct a metaphor which helps me think about uh, what they're doing or how I can use them. And I call them natural biomarkers. And that says if the immune system is, is basing its decisions in part on uh, stress proteins, then maybe we can uh, get the system to behave the way we like, uh, or we think we'd like it to behave, using stress proteins or fragments of stress protein as part of the molecular language that the system has in its dialogue with the body. So we, um, we can, by identifying um, the biomarkers that are the most informative to the immune system, we can also use those molecules, or try to use them, as signals for getting the immune system to upregulate inflammation or downregulate inflammation. Personally, I've been most involved in getting it to downregulate inflammation in autoimmune disease. Different people have different kinds of minds. If you, you, you want to do science, uh, there are many things you can do in science. You can do theory, you can do molecular experimentation, you can do physiology, you can do pathology, you can do systems biology. Um, but if you do something, you should do it well, which means that in growing up in, in science, or anything else in life, it's, it's good to begin to understand how you as a person are most uh, productive and, and uh, to begin to understand how you think individually. And that will lead people into doing different things, and, uh, which is what people do anyway. I mean, uh, a per, uh, the the uh, most important thing in growing up and they take 50 or 60 years, is to begin to understand who you are and what gives you the most pleasure and what gives you the most success and uh, where you can uh, make the most um, contribution. And then if, if you find such an opportunity, then you can fulfill yourself. So I think 
different people have many different things to contribute. The whole translational process from idea to observation or from observation to idea to experimental systems and then getting into patients. Um, different people will have different aptitudes for different aspects. Uh, but they, to, get, to do the job, they have to work together. So it's finding out who you are and then finding a uh, family of people you can collaborate with who can appreciate your ideas and you can appreciate their ideas and then together you can do something.